Hey guys, I'm back with a new video. In this video, let us learn about Flexbox in CSS. So what is Flexbox? Now Flexbox is one of the methods that we can make use of for laying out elements in one dimension. So a longer row or a longer column. It is a lot powerful and easy to use compared to floats that we had learned in the previous video. So to see Flexbox in action, let us create a new folder, 5.flexbox. And inside it, let us create a new file and name it as flexbox.html. So right here, let us quickly scaffold our basic HTML boilerplate. So type exclamation mark and press tab in CSS. So let us start by creating a div with the class of container. Inside this div, we are going to have four divs, each with the class of element. Next, let us add some text to each of the constituent divs. So let us say one, two, three and four. So now let us define some CSS rules. So right inside the 5.flexbox folder, let us create a new file and name it as styles.css. And then let us go at the top of our head section and add a link to reference the CSS file that we just created. So styles.css. Now right inside the styles.css file. So let us add a CSS rule for defining the styles for the container element. So we use the div with the class of container as the selector and then to define our CSS rules for the container. Let us add the declaration block using curly braces. So right inside the curly braces, let us add our CSS rules. Let us first give a border of four pixels, solid lime green to the container. Next, let us target our four divs with the class of element and define some rules for them as well. So to each div with the class of element, let us give it a width of 100 pixels, a height of 100 pixels. Next, let us add a background color. So let us set this to violet background color. Finally, let us give this a margin of 5 pixels. So they are a little bit separated. Margin 5 pixels. So let us give this a preview. And you can see we get four boxes laid down in a vertical fashion. Now what if we want to lay out these elements horizontally? That is where we can make use of the flex. Now to make use of the flex box in this example, the very first step is to set the display property to flex for our container. So right here, set the display property to flex. Now let us give this a preview to see what this single line does and you can see by just setting the display property of the container to flex our elements are now laid horizontally. So with flexbox we can lay out the elements in one direction either in a row or a column. Now we can control the direction of flex by making use of the flex direction property. Now the default value of flex direction is row. So flex direction set this to row so this is the default value for flex direction such that our boxes are laid out in a row but if we set the flex direction to column then our boxes will get laid down in a column so set this to column and give this a preview in the browser now we also have column reverse with which our columns get laid down in the reverse order so let me show you this column reverse and this is what we get now our columns are stacked down vertically in the reverse order. Also we have row reverse with which our boxes get pushed to the right side and the order of displaying the boxes is also reversed. So let me show you this row reverse. Now let us talk about the concept of alignment in flex. To align items you first need to understand the concept of axis. So in flex we have two axes, the main axis and the cross axis main axis and the cross axis now these directions are dependent on the row so if we set the flex direction to row then our main axis will be the horizontal axis and the cross axis will be along the vertical axis so let me write this down so if we set the flex direction to row then in that case the main axis will be the horizontal axis so this will be our main axis and the cross axis will be along the vertical so like this now contrary to this if we set the flex direction to column
then the main axis will be the vertical axis and the cross axis will be the horizontal axis so now using these axes we can easily align the items inside the container so to align items we just need to remember two basic css properties justify content and align items justify content and align items so we use justify content to align the items along the main axis and we use the align items property to align the items along the cross axis makes sense so let us go back to visual studio code and set the flex direction property for the container to row So with this simple change, our main axis will be the horizontal axis and the cross axis will be along the vertical axis. Now let us say we want to push our boxes right inside the center of our container. So for this, we can make use of the justify content property to align the items along the main axis, which is along the horizontal, right? So right here, let us set the justify content property to center. So let us give this a preview to see how this looks. So you can see now our boxes are right inside the center of the div. We can also push them to the end of the container by setting the justify content to flex hyphen end. And this is what we get. Now we can also distribute our items equally right inside the container. For this, we just need to set the justify content property to space evenly. And this is now how it looks. Next, we also have space between. where the first and last boxes get pushed to the ends of the container and other boxes are distributed with equal spacing between them. So you can play with different values to see what you get. Now let us set the justify content property back to center. So this was all regarding the aligning the items along the horizontal axis or along the main axis. Next, let us see the align items property to align our items along the cross axis, which for our case is along the vertical direction because we set the flex direction to row, right? So the default value for align items is flex start, but you can set it to flex end. To push the items at the end of the vertical axis so give this a preview and you can see for this case nothing happens because there is not enough space in our container our container is not tall enough to fit these boxes right now even if though we have set the display to flex for the container this container is still a block level element so by default it gets tall enough to fit its children but if we think of it from inside, it behaves as a flex. So to align our items along the vertical axis, let us give the container some height. So let us set the height property to 400 pixels. So now you can see that we have a lot of space in there and our boxes are pushed to the end of the vertical axis. Now we can also set this to center and this will put the element in the center of the container. So change this to center and give this a preview. So this is what we get. Now what if you want to move the second box to the top and the third box to the bottom. So for this we can make use of the align self property. So let us go back to our HTML template and add a class of element hyphen 2 to the second div and a class of element hyphen 3 to the third box. So right here, let us add a CSS rule to basically move the second box to the top and the third box to the bottom of the container. So let us first target the second box and set the align cell property to flex hyphen start. Now this property can only be applied to a flex item and not to a flex container. Now in order to move the third box to the bottom of the container, we can again make use of the align hyphen self property and set this to flex end. So dot element three align self flex hyphen end. 
So let us give this a preview in the browser to see what we get. So you can see the second box is now at the top of the container and the third box has now moved to the bottom of the container. Now this was all I wanted to cover about aligning of items. Let us now discuss about the properties that we can make use of for sizing the items. So all the properties that we are now going to cover are applicable for the flex items and not for the flex container, okay? Now let us first discuss about the flex basis property which we can use to set the initial size of our boxes. So let us go at the top of our CSS file and inside the CSS rule for the div with the class of element, let us make use of the flex hyphen basis property. Now by default it is set to auto which means that the browser will look for the width property and use its value for the size of the flex item. Make sense? So if we set the flex basis to auto, nothing is going to happen. So let me show you this flex basis set this to auto and you can see nothing happens. However, if we change the flex basis to 200 pixels. This is going to override the width property of our flex item. Now the reason for this is simple to understand. In our case the flex direction is row. So flex basis basically translates to the width property. Okay. If we set the flex direction to column then the flex basis will translate to height. So if we give this a preview you can see that now our boxes are a bit bigger. We can apply these properties to individual items as well. So make sure to try that as well. So now let me comment out the flex basis property and next let us try out the flex hyphen grow property. So the flex grow property determines the growth factor of our flex items. Now currently each of our boxes are 100 pixels in width and we have a plenty of extra space available. Now with flex grow we can allow these items to grow and take up the available space. So by default the flex grow property is set to zero. That is why our boxes are not growing but if we set the flex grow property to 1 then each of these boxes will grow at the same factor so let us give this a preview so this is what we get also we can change the growth factor for each of our individual boxes if we want next we have the flex hyphen shrink property which is the exact opposite of the flex hyphen grow property and it basically tells the browser how these boxes should shrink if there is not enough space to fit in the container so let me comment the flex grow property and instead set the flex hyphen shrink property to 1 and this will make sure that as we resize the page all our flex items shrink by the same factor. So let me demo this. So you can see each of our boxes are shrinking by the same factor. Now let us set the flex shrink property to 0 for the second box. So flex hyphen shrink and set this to 0 so that it doesn't shrink even on resizing of the page width. With this in place, let us give this a preview in the browser and let me demo this. So now you can see we have eliminated the shrinking of second box whereas the other boxes have shrunk, right? So this was all I wanted to cover about Flexbox. If you like the video, do give it a thumbs up or comment down below if you have any query. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and let's catch up in the very next one.